All right. Okay. Well, good evening, my friends, my fiends. And absolutely, my motherfucking sex machines. This is the Power Hour. Power Hour. It's echoing, so it's like it's making me feel like. Okay, well, it's not echoing for you, so that's good. But this is the Power Hour, like I said, with me, Prince, and the illustrious Poopster. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, children. You want some candy? You want some candy? Ah. No. Well, so yes, we're here on another Thursday evening. Going to talk about uh, 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 wonderful things going on inside and outside and everywhere in the world. And this week, we're joined by a special guest, someone that I've known for quite some time, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know his name, and, and I, but, we could go by, but he goes by the name Mr. Murder in the scene, uh, and a lot of people would question that and be like, hey, man, but Mr. Murder is all about pushing the limits so uh, uh, he'll troll the fuck out of you probably I don't know I haven't seen him do it yet he just arrived no, here a few days ago I, so. I, I, I don't troll very much man uh, I'm I'm Mr. Murder in that, that uh, I enjoy reading about murders <laughs> They're well, good. that's even more comforting well you know I enjoy it makes reading life about more murder. interesting. yes well, like I said, um, 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 we've got Mr. Murder here. We've got Poopster here. We're going to talk um, about a few weird things going on. Firstly, uh, as we always start out with, we start with crypto. And I want to you know, talk about prices and things like that. But uh, Mr. Murder is actually not familiar with the crypto scene. So... You know, I think there's some indoctrination that uh, we really have to get involved as to uh, what crypto is, what it means, why it is what it is. So, Poopster, can you um, begin with an introduction to Mr. Murder regarding uh, crypto as to what it is, why it is what it is, etc., etc.? Well, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, crypto um, is a electronic money, basically. Um, the value. Uh, I'm I'm familiar with with it a little bit, having bought stuff from weird websites where you oh. need to exchange money for Bitcoin. Dark web. Oh, okay. Oh. That's what I, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm only in. It's just uh, in my mind, it was a you know I'm turning it into another country's money, and that country is the internet. Hey, actually, you've got a pretty good a pretty good basis on on mm, what exchanges. Yeah, summary, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understand like what um, what cryptocurrency is. Uh, I'm just I don't know anything about like the scams and stuff like that that you that you guys go after. Oh, well, that's that's what we're here for. And how you could make a scam. And I'm interested in that because I like I uh, I enjoy that stuff too. Well. Actually, um, the Holy Roger coin, uh, we are essentially, I mean, you know, we've gotten into this before, exactly why the Holy Roger coin is called the Holy Roger coin, uh, and that is based on a scam that was perpetrated, perpetrated by a man named Roger, uh, Roger Veer, uh, in the case of Bitcoin Cash, where he claimed that Bitcoin Cash, a fork of Bitcoin, was in fact Bitcoin itself, and duped a whole lot of other people into, uh, well, new people, into believing that it was, while lining uh, his and uh, a mining company, Bitmain's pocket, uh, the entire way. And he's still going at it. I mean, um, wow. <laughs> some, something I heard on, on Twitter today, because uh, I'm, I'm rogering Twitter 
Um, so if you want to follow the Holy Roger on Twitter, uh, find me at, well, at Roger Consortium, or just search the Holy Roger. Um, and uh, I'm Rogering Twitter. Anyways, See, in in England, that sounds like you're saying you're having sex with Twitter. Well, there, there, there's Roger, a lot of like, I'm going to give her a good Rogering type of thing. Yeah, man, it, th- that's true. I mean, Roger is a transportable term, and and uh, we run into this very very frequently. Uh, I guess I am either not, way you get fucked, though, right? Either way, it's all the same, man. You know, ask Donnie Wu. He he fucking knows, man. So man, um, that 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 uh, uh, I gotta say, like props to that guy for that scam. That's a, a, a ingenious scam that he got away with. I mean, it sucks that a lot of people got taken. But well, he's still going at that's it. That's an um, intelli- Yeah, I know. He's still going at it. Like that's an intelligent. You know that that was a smart move and not get in trouble. That's fucking great. Good. I mean, good on him. He only Try didn't to... get in trouble because there was no basis for for anyone to really um, ah. to, to to move in on that. Um, Roger already was was a, a, a convicted felon before he even got into Bitcoin, and also as he as he states, he he was a self made millionaire mm-hmm. long before, um, probably uh, from selling uh, illegal fireworks because that's what he was uh, uh, convicted of. Uh, that's neither here nor there. I mean, I, I don't judge people on that, but uh, but but you know, past results. Who knows that kind of shit? Um, that's, that's that's one of those. What was I talking about? Shit. I, where I was where, gonna, where I don't want to hate the player so much as as hate the fact that he played the game. Well, any any sector that you that arrive in uh, the financial sector is going to be victim to uh, any anything like that. Um, well, especially yeah, like in, if it's companies not companies regulated, like the uh, if there's not the SEC holding people's hands, they just assume that people, you know, are not going to rip them off for some reason. But, um, anyways, uh, Poopster, what was I saying? I was saying something as an example. I can't remember. Um, I, you asked me uh, to introduce the. Uh, yes, I did. No, I, I was gonna. Murder. I was gonna find something on on crypto Twitter uh, to reference, but uh, I don't know. I think it had to do with Roger, but uh, mm. I'm I'm trying to avoid tagging Roger Veer because he was the result of of, of having uh, our our original Twitter account uh, shut down. So. I'm uh, trying to avoid the Bitcoin Cash people because they can't really understand our humor. And what's interesting about Roger in general is that uh, nobody seems to understand duality <laughs> and uh, and the humor of it all. Like I, I'm I'm making these memes and and such uh, about Rogering, and nobody seems to understand them, which I think is beautiful. I think it's better if people uh, don't understand it. But, uh, yeah. Anyways. Well, he's a question. Maybe they'll try to find out. Maybe, but probably not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm the only person that still looks things up on the Internet to make sure I'm right. Well, for example, I, I made a uh, a meme. Um, what, what's the guy's name? Charles Ponzi? I'm sure you're aware of who Charles Ponzi is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's obvious his name is... He's a good one, too. Yeah. So, uh, I made a meme of Charles Ponzi that said, I am the real Roger. With no no other explanation, but no one fucking gets it. (laughs) Man, he he created something beautiful, though. Like, I gotta say, from selling steak knives to meat out of the back of your car to, to all that, like... Any, anything like that is, is you know, well, that's 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 amazing. I understand, and I, I I would kind of agree, but you know, there's there's a moral argument that that persists in my head uh, when you know that you're you're taking advantage of people, but you continue to do so. Uh, See, I think that that if you if you have to draw up the business plan and it looks in any way like a pyramid, 
<laughs> even if it's upside down or sideways, if you're not smart enough to know that that is the pyramid on which the term pyramid scheme rests, well, that's the point. You kind of I mean, like, deserve to get taken for that. People aren't generally, you know, that smart about things, and you have to protect them. It's it's a it's a question of protection versus exploitation. And I would I would rather help someone and teach them than allow them or then rip them off and allow them to be victim to further scams because uh in 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 our ecosystem specifically the cryptocurrency ecosystem it's an emerging market and the more that that happens the the worse name that it gives this emerging market so we have uh a responsibility as early adopters to help people not get uh, engaged in these scams because if they do, it's just another domino for for um, saying that it's not uh, legitimate. Yeah, I I uh, I don't think that the 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 structure of the the finances and economics of, of cryptocurrency could ever be displayed in a, a triangle like a pyramid. Though. Oh, it can. It has. Uh, really, uh, I mean, if you're talking about Chris, cryptocurrency in general. Uh, well, yeah, it, but I mean, I it, like if if I have enough people that agree with my particular type of cryptocurrency, would I like get in any way just for thinking of it money? It depends on what your stake in 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 that uh, coin is. People aren't going to give you money, um, you know, just for thinking of something. Maybe they will, but. Um, in terms of inherited value, uh, all these cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, started from zero. So, yeah. uh, as I explain to people, um, what the value of the blockchain is, uh, is in data permanence. And uh, I was explaining to someone the other day at my hotel, uh, it was early in the morning, and I said, I can explain it to you pretty simply and, and concise. That uh, data permanence, uh, you know, you can throw away a document or whatever, put it in the recycling bin, delete it. So the difference with cryptocurrency is that it's uh, an active distributed ledger, uh, cannot be uh, deleted, cannot be altered, cannot be counterfeited, uh, counterfeited in any way. And uh, so in, in that case, it's uh, it's it's what it's worth in digital gold as as far as that goes whether it's bitcoin or not bitcoin is just the the baseline it's 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 the big daddy so to speak it's um it's what drives the market if if bitcoin didn't have the value it did none of the subsequent altcoins would be worth anywhere near if they couldn't be traded against bitcoin now this may not be that way forever. I mean, Bitcoin could crash. Who knows? Uh, it's it's outdated. It's not necessarily efficient. In my opinion, it's a settlement layer at this point. Um, but it is what it is, and uh, the way it's traded and the number of heads that trade it create a margin ecosystem as well as a direct trade ecosystem. So it's active twenty four seven. And that's all it needs. Anyways. Oh. oh, wait. Yeah, this was this is what it was before. Uh, Roger Veer seems to be the Epstein of crypto, crypto. What do you think about that statement, Poopster? Roger Veer is the Epstein of crypto? Yeah, connected to all the trash. That's, that's what this person said. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I could see that, yeah. He's just, like, considering it in his head, like, Roger, Epstein. Don't leave me hanging here, man. Well, you know, I don't know. Be, like, true, you know, he needs to get, a, you know, taken out, like, Epstein, you know? So. Whoa. Damn, <laughs> dude. Hey, really? you're trying to make comparison. You know, right now, you know. Hey, man, you're, you're going to get, like, yet, so. you're going to get accused of, like, so, uh... Did that Roger guy set out and, and 
fuck a bunch of younger, much, much younger cryptocurrency? <laughs> yes, in fact, he did. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. He he just uh, he undermined the legitimacy of of crypto in general by by claiming that his fork was in fact the real Bitcoin. Uh, when it really, I, you know, it, I read about a con man in like the the twenties and 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 the very like the nineteen ten nineteen twenty area, I believe anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he figured out a way to run a gambling ring on the horses, hmm. but make it so that he always won. And he and he like he would buy a horse and then show these people, yeah, he c it could race, but it could only race as far as he showed them, so it couldn't mm. do an actual lap at the track. And he would sell them these horses and stuff, and he ended up with, like, $3 million when he finally stopped. He wrote a book called How I Spent Your Money. <laughs> nice. It was really good. He had, like, a ton of really awesome scams, especially for back in the day. That was, you know... Oh, I always gave him a lot of credit for that, man. It, it, it's it's if you get caught for it, good. But if you can get away with it, man, it, that's like that's like retiring as a drug dealer, or or growing old and dying of natural causes as a, as a serial killer. That's like that's impressive. You got to give props for that. I think. Yeah, you're not really breaking any law or anything like that unless you get caught, right? So. Well, no, no. You find if you find a loophole. Hey, yeah. all right. It's, it's wait, wait a second here. It's not just, hold up, hold up. I mean, this goes back to to the difference between wrong and illegal. Okay, and, and uh, uh, Mr. Murder and I have talked about this before, and we've even it's even been brought up uh, in the terms of the law with with uh, with with our particular um, 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 you know engagement. I, w I will say that I've said to a judge before. Uh, that wanted me to say that what I did was wrong. I said what I did was illegal, and then I got elbowed by my lawyer to say that what I actually did was wrong. But what I did was illegal, and I don't think what I did was wrong. You know? No, uh, that, that's a good point. I mean, there, there's there's a clear line between wrong and illegal in in the justice system in the United States specifically. Um. You know, it may be uh, wrong to the system that you're taking advantage of of the uh, uh, institution, so to speak. It, it's wrong to them, but really, it's uh, it's it's kind of like a Robin Hood thing in a lot of ways. But uh, as far, I mean, as we're seeing now with uh, criminal justice and in, 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 uh, drugs, low level drug offenders, that. The only people they were hurting was themselves, and the system was was taking advantage of that by telling them that uh, that what they did was illegal, when in fact uh, uh, they were a victim of of addiction or or anything else like that. It's um, it's unfortunate, and uh, you know, I personally have experience with that. I, I know Mr. Murder does, and I know a lot mm -hmm. of people do. I mean, most people can. Uh, most people have someone who has been affected by the opioid crisis in their lives, whether it's, you know, directly or their cousin or, you know, we're all touched by it. It's, uh, where do, it you, where do, do you think the, the opioids come from? Because I have a theory on that. My theory is, is that, okay, <clears throat> uh, Middle East provides a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, uh, opium yeah, to the, the Golden world. Triangle. Golden Triangle, yes. Yeah, but yeah. in terms of, of the United States, the, the reason this quote-unquote epidemic started uh, is due to the Sacklers and uh, OxyContin um, because that was basically pushed and unloaded on, on middle America and oh, no, you know, I mean, they would get the, benefits the, the and heroin. And, Heroin is much, much cheaper and much more effective than it ever was. It is, but let's say... Why do you think that in particular is? Okay, well, what happened was that, you know, insurance, if you have insurance to pay for a prescription, you could get, you know, a, a month worth of OxyContin for, for $3. That's cheaper than going on the street and buying heroin, okay? 
So that yeah. happened for, for a lot of middle class Americans for quite a long time. You know, they would give painkillers to uh, to anyone for the most part. Um, yeah, they they got bonuses if they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean uh, it's it, it's pretty crazy. So once the prescribers got in the position where they could lose their medical license, they stopped prescribing yeah, the, the way they were. Crackdown. They yes. made a database. Exactly. And once they made a database, it was over. Yes. So Americans turned back to the streets, back to heroin, because it was cheaper. It was more available. And uh, now we have the, the fentanyl, the car fentanyl. Fentanyl was always there, but, uh, I mean, you know as well as I do. Uh, junkies, okay, let's say, I mean, I know that, ju- that uh, the dealers, they, sp- they spike their bags. They put one or two bags with a ton of fentanyl, so someone overdoses purposefully. And then everybody thinks it's the greatest shit and on then, earth. Yes, and every junkie then wants a bag. Exactly. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a sick system, and I don't know how we can we can really write it. I think it. that was all planned. I think this whole thing has been set up since the early two thousands. Possibly, because I I remember I'm not that old, but I remember stories of hearing how in the early eighties. Well, the crack like there was so much cocaine. Oh yeah, and then there was crack, and and we were at war in mm-hmm. South America at that point in time. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, when we go to war in Afghanistan, all of a sudden, right before that, they're pr- pulling out prescriptions and giving people painkillers and shit, and then all of a sudden they take it away, and they flood the streets from Afghanistan, one of the corners of the Golden Triangle. They, they flood the streets with, with cheap, available heroin and get everybody nice and addicted. Exactly. I, I really think that's what happened. You know, I, 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 uh, it's funny because I, I, I live with a few other people and they, they don't really have any um, mm, concern. So I mean, there's someone fucking vacuuming right now as as <laughs> as I'm broadcasting. I don't know. I don't know if it comes through with the microphone, but man, people are fucked up. <laughs> oh, we can't hear it at all, man. Okay, good. Good deal. Yeah. Anyways, Hoopster, um, have you been affected by by the opioid crisis? Uh, no, I have not. There's no one in your in who you know has been affected. Nope. Wow. You are oh, one of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're one of the minority, man. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody do drugs. Well, well in, in my can. opinion, okay. <laughs> um, we can tell you what all of them are like. Yeah, yeah. we could. Between the two of us, anyway. Well, in, yeah. in my opinion, the opioid crisis, as, as, uh, as it is, and... Most of the other things that are upsetting uh, the United States right now are not Christ are not isolated issues. Okay, so the reason why people are turning to escapes like drugs uh, or anything else—I mean, binge watching television—is is due to our climate and and the fact that people are not happy. I mean, you're making less. You're working more, and you're looking for a way to make your life tolerable. And uh, I see it over and over again. So, I I mean, I, I'm even a victim myself, so I totally understand. I mean, there goes my buzzing microphone, but, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a socio-political problem. It's not personal. It's not, it's not the addiction itself. I mean... Have you ever heard of the, the, um, what's it called? Rat? I've even talked about that before, I think, on here. Um, the Rat City experiment? I, I read about an, uh, 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 one, the, uh, a paper that was just published today that was about early life adversity and, uh, uh, uh the addiction to opiates. Mm-hmm. And uh, what they did was they... Oh, it's they, Rat Park, I'm sorry. That's, that's technically called... Oh. 
No, I, I I read a thing recently though that that said that they think that er, like problems in your early life lead to, lead you to have a more addictive personality, so you're more willing to seek out and and get. I think that's bullshit. Drug. That's bullshit. Well, a, it addictive personality rats. per se. I mean, anybody. Anybody is going to be liable to to do anything if put in the right climate for it. So that brings me to to Rat Park, I, I, and I really do think I've mentioned this before. Uh, it was an addiction study in in the seventies, uh, published from seventy eight to eighty one, um, and the hypothesis of the Rat Park experiment was that drugs do not cause addiction and um, addiction is is attributed directly to your living conditions and your quality of life Mm -hmm. not the drug Mm -hmm. itself so they built this rat park uh, to test this hypothesis um, and essentially gave the rats Everything they wanted, it was a rat heaven. And they gave them two two drop dispensers, one with straight water and one with uh, a morphine solution. Um, and they found out that most most of the rats would avoid the morphine solution um, given the the you know engagement that they that they experienced in their environment. So, I mean, they could fuck all they wanted. They could, uh, you know, eat all they wanted. So, they didn't need to rely on the morphine to provide them with, um, you know, further reinforcement. Now, the study, I think, was rejected originally, which is weird. I mean, but it shows you the climate that we were in. And uh, eventually, I think, got picked back up. But... uh, to me, that's a very telling sign, and they actually related this to uh, um, Native American reservations and such because it was the same kind of thing. Uh, a lot of a lot of Native Americans that were, you know, marginalized and, and and made to exist in a small environment like that would turn to addiction specifically. Um, I can't remember the link in this study where that was, but uh, that was the real yeah. life. Link it's to bad it. living conditions. That's the 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 thing that I was reading was was basically that, that like if they gave them less bedding and stuff like that or made made their lives more difficult in some way, then they would start going for the uh, the morphine water. Yeah, the morphine water. The as it as it they were. they did the same study with chocolate too. And it turns out chocolate was just as addictive. For the Societal rat. climate, yes, Mice. moose girls. Thank you. <laughs> no, rats are not humans. That's why I mentioned the the uh, the reservation experiment in uh, in addendum to the rat park experiment. Um, well, their their neurochemistry is similar to ours. Yeah, similar that, that's enough why that you can figure out if it's a hormonal thing or some kind of a. a yeah. yeah. That's that's why people, um, you know, they rely on uh, rats necessarily. But, anyways, I think that experiment, regardless of how you feel uh, as as uh, about rats compared to humans, there's a lot of addendum information that that uh, that supports the rat park experiment, uh, and it's definitely a valid thing to think about it because when when you look at it, when you're happy in your environment and happy in your life. God damn it. When you're happy in your environment, happy in your life, you're probably not going to turn to, to you know, crack or jankum or... <laughs> uh, is jankum real? Or crocodile. Crocodile. Yeah, jankum is oh, yeah, real. man. Jankum is totally real, man. I it's, thought that was a joke. That's just like shit and piss in a jug, right? It is. It's shit and piss literally in a jug. And you get high off the fumes... Uh, from your shit and piss. I think... Poopster that, knows all about that. No, we should pay somebody to do that. I'm like, sure you I can would, find I them would on the internet. I would put $50 towards... Jankum Addicts Anonymous. Somebody... 
yeah, get I, I could probably find somebody that would be willing to try that just to see because that's a really good homemade high. Actually, I'm, I'm looking here that they're saying that Jenkum is likely a hoax. I mean, okay, I've, I've that's never what been I had heard before. To try it. <coughs> Ah, uh, but who knows? But Whatever. If if we all kicked in fifty dollars, like a hundred and fifty bucks to some like uh, Prince, we both know somebody uh, at least one or two people that would just try that on camera. They probably would if we put <laughs> up enough money. Yeah, I've I've I've. I've seen somebody get a beer funneled in their ass for twenty five dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. she, she's asking, "What the fuck is Jenkum?" Well, we we explained it. That's for sure. Uh, it's shit and girl. piss in a bottle, and you let it ferment. Mm-hmm. And and the um, the fumes are what get you high. Uh, and actually, another odd one that is called crocodile, and that is um, mostly, oh no, that's real though. Oh, it is the crocodile. Yeah, real. that's Jen- terrible. Jenkum maybe. Real, it probably isn't, but crocodile is totally real, and it's fucking scary. So, uh, mainly in Russia and the Ukraine, that, that's where it originated. Uh, where it's codeine here now. is legal, codeine, um, codeine cough syrup, codeine painkillers are over the counter. So, in order to get that heroin-like high, these people uh, do this. You know, uh, half-ass chemistry to create um, a morphine derivative called desomorphine, and uh, desomorphine by itself is not dangerous any more than anything, anything else is dangerous. But the ra- the way that they they prepare it, it's with um, it's with flakes from batteries. There, there's a whole bunch of weird ingredients. Yeah, it's, and it's like totally all the impure. Bad shit. Yeah, it's it's totally impure. So they create this desomorphine, which is really strong and gets them high, but it rots their flesh off, like literally. And uh, and it's called crocodile because it uh, it literally makes your skin look like a crocodile. Um, and it's kind of scary. I mean, but you know, the the opioid crisis is not limited to the United States. I think I think the world is feeling. An unrest of sorts, and you know, we're all in the same fucking flying rock, headed to the same destination, death. Uh, why can't we all get along? That's that's what I don't understand. Why can't we agree on something? But that's a deeper argument, I guess, than 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 can be answered. In, in we're all individuals. Well, that's why. Yeah, we're all individuals. Now let's everybody say our, it together. We're all individuals. <laughs> Poopster? Poopster? He's asleep. No, I'm here. Okay. Well, let's one, two, three, and we'll we'll do the chant. We'll do the mantra. We're all individuals, okay? One, two, three. We're We're all all individuals. individuals. (laughs) There we go. You could have done his name is Robert Paulson. Monty Python reference. His name is Robert Paulson. Yeah, yeah. That was from the life of Brian. Yeah, the life good of Brian was good, man. It was a good, good film. Okay, so where are we? Where are we at? Um, okay, we we burned through a half hour on drugs and Bitcoin. So what else do we yeah. have? You know, I I I ran across some doomsday asteroid articles. I think. Um, let me see here. Well, I, I ran across across uh, two of them. So, let's see here. Let me pull them up. I think I think one of them, the first one, with the, the billion-ton, 14-mile-long mysterious alien formation, yeah. I, don't, I don't really think that's a, 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 a thing to be worried about, because it's a debris no. tale of an well, asteroid. Well, let, let, me, let me just explain the history with, with the, the killer asteroids. Uh, I scour news articles every week for, for content, and every single fucking week, there's a brand new doomsday asteroid heading heading towards Earth. And, um, it, you know, from what I can tell, it's not, it, it's, it's just FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, 
But I, I can't figure out why they they, they want to scare people into thinking that uh, you know an asteroid is going to wipe us out every week. So I don't know. So asteroid. I know some good conspiracy theories about why. <laughs> well, me too. Me too. So the the Geminids meteor shower, um, sixty thousand miles wide, fourteen million miles long. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's you have to think like it's a billion tons. Now also, do the square mileage of sixteen times fourteen, no, space and is divide a billion a, tons into that. So yeah, that's how a, many tons would be in in we're a very small, miles. and yeah, then divide that by what forty? I think is is because uh, the Earth is twenty five thousand miles wide. Mm-hmm. I believe, or no, it's twenty five thousand miles around the side. Like all the way around. Okay. So that's the that's the circumference. So if somebody remembers algebra or, or mm-hmm. geometry, probably algebra. Figure out this. Uh, you know where I'm going with this. It's it's. I don't think it's a big deal. It's just going to be a nice light show. Yeah. Most likely, we're not going to get any chicks lube impacts from from a meteor shower, but. You know, the way that they frame these articles, a billion ton, 14 mile long, mysterious a- alien formation in Earth is heading right into it. <laughs> Get your, f- we're fucked goggles on, people. Like, then it says, yes, it's debris tail from an asteroid 3200 Platheon, the source of the annual Geminids meteor shower. So we're here every year. But we're going to, fucking give you that headline just to freak the motherfucking shit out of you. Because that's what we do. That's what they do. That's always the plan. Keep us keep us well-fed and sedentary, and then make us scared to leave the house. Mm-hmm. Well, and then here, you don't have to control us with the military. You no. got us with fear and food. Yeah, and just keep, keep people consuming, keep people buying. Because if people... You can get everything online now. If people think their lives are ending, they're going to continue to to, to consume and and act the way that they normally do because they think they're not going to have it tomorrow. And so there's no need to change. So here's another one. Uh, Solar eclipse, killer asteroid set to gray skies December 26th. So, yeah, yet another doomsday asteroid. Um... That Nigeria and indeed the rest of the world are set to behold two astronomical events on Boxing Day, December 26th. Uh, solar eclipse and a monster asteroid called 310442, which will make a close encounter with Earth. It, uh, astronomers advise that people dust off their binoculars and keep their eyes in the skies because, yeah, watching it will make it fucking not fly into the Earth, right? Uh, Wait, what the fuck? They're talking about astrology farther down. Really? And astrology and on st- astronomy. No, are- they're not compatible. <laughs> yeah, no. It also marks the beginning of the new cycle, lasting about six months until the lunar eclipse of June fifth, twenty twenty. Oh, that's the not solar, astronomy. Solar either. eclipse, December twenty nineteen. Astrology oh. will complement themes found in the lunar eclipse on January tenth, twenty twenty. So fuck the Guardian, okay? Wow, I could have told you that. Well, yeah, yeah I could have told you that too. <laughs> But, I mean, I, I just pull up these articles to, to discuss them, you know, objectively. But, Christ, astrology is it's not reliable, real. biatches. It's a self-fulfilling it's, prop- prophecy at, 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 at most. How, 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 how arrogant is it to believe that during your lifetime, all of humanity will, will end? I mean, like the amount of hubris that it takes to believe that that's true. Like it would be great. I would love to know that when I died, I would love for my last thought to be well. At least you. everybody else is gonna die too. So I won't miss any movies. I won't miss any good times with anybody. It's all fucking done. Yeah, but that's I don't a good think point, that's man. It does take a, a matter of, of egotism, of a matter of ego, to think that on yeah. your watch, the civilization will end. Yeah, the, 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 for, for, for 150, 150 to 250,000 years, 
Homo sapiens have gone on uh, as as cousins to monkeys and done pretty well <laughs> by making shoes and buildings made of metal. But it's all going to end while we're alive because we're the special generation. We're the special guys, and we're just yeah, we've yeah. gone too far. We're we're all special, and everybody has cameras and and shit. They take pictures of themselves too much. You can. You don't even have to stalk people anymore. I can stay home and stalk all of the famous people I want to. Fuck just yeah! Just by seeing what they post on. And Instagram I'm sure you already do that, my friend, Mister Murder. I, there aren't any left that I want to stalk. All my favorite famous people. You can are stalk dead. Taylor Swift because the name of our uh, episode tonight is called Taylor Swift is a Roger. And uh, maybe I should explain that. I don't know. Maybe there is no explanation. I think she's a kitty. I think that that during sex, if she could play act as a cat would, I think that that uh, that would make her very happy. Because I saw her talk about doing I see the her, cat like, licking movie. her paws and stuff. Totally, man. Yeah, yeah. She she would totally like. I know girls that like to Shake play as different. Shake it you know, you, some girls like to play a daughter and call you daddy, and some girls like to play a rape victim. No offense to any real ones. That's just how it goes. Yes. And some girls like to play as like little kids, and some girls like to play as as cats and dogs and stuff like that. I know a couple of girls that enjoy being dogs that I didn't know about until I knew that was a thing. <laughs> That's are do I know any of them? Yes. Are, oh, jeez. You knew one of them. Uh. uh Remember our old guitarist X that I hooked up with for a while? Which one, dude? With the red hair that he had a nine-year relationship with Jen. Well, uh, she, well, she. I she never liked, got there with, with 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 her. I mean, she, you know, made advances. She, she liked to me. The, and, and rest the, in peace the for this person we're talking thing. about. Uh, uh, actually, as far as the cosmic universe goes, we're we're we're, we're going into eternity <sighs> here, mentioning. A person we know who died, actually, as a direct result of the the opioid epidemic, and uh, God rest her soul. Ah, but bringing she, it right she back, had there some you go. Very interesting sexual deviations. Still, she was a great time in bed. I never got she there, man. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know. I, I had to date her, but man, was it worth it. I mean, uh, I loved She's her. She was a great girl. Piece of garbage. But she was she was a wonderful human being, and I love her to death. But she was a filthy piece of garbage in bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I miss game her playing uh, gender specific. Um, where did we go wrong, Moose Girl? Please tell me so I can correct it. Um, it's going to take her a second. Oh yes, guys can play games as well. We're we're not trying to be specific about this. Uh, we're just. Really referring to people specifically that 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 we know, um, but yeah, guys are probably the worst when it comes to that because the man is generally the one who has the the authority, and so they're, they're the ones that are going to go a lot farther, yeah, with their fucking mind games exactly. So man, you know, m- males are not immune to this whole argument. Uh, I mean, I'm I sure can't see the text, but uh, I, men are, you know, men are pieces of garbage. Too. I'm a filthy piece of shit. I will be the first person to say if, if it's sexual, I would generally try it just to see. And I've done entirely too much to be comfortable with in my life. And see, you know what? I, I've found what works for me, but it's, it's amazing to see that other people, some other people actually do that, too. And I'm only a heterosexual man, so I've only known women that did that. Right, right, right. See, Poopster they, is, they is married, how to love it. and uh, yeah. I believe he he lost his virginity at marriage, didn't you, Poopster? No, that's false. Okay, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> oh, so you were laying pipe before you got to the thing. Good. Oh. <laughs> Poopster was, like, going crazy with the bitches before he got his... Um, his supple wife, who he has sex with every night. That's right. See, if you wait longer, you can have more later. No, oh, fuck that, man. All the sex, all at once. Smoke crack, no, no. fuck bitches, worship Satan. 
I would just I would hate like there are particular things that I really enjoy during that and 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 I would really hate to marry somebody that's not into that. So I have you have to go around and find all the other people that are filthy pieces of shit just like you are and then you have them and then you find the one that's like tolerable to be around and you keep her around for a while and then you know you get involved and stuff and that's but it's interesting we were so we were so close with this girl that we actually both knew kind of that she was we knew that she was interesting and it would be fun yeah but we neither of us knew until I I got there and, and you know good time whatever yeah 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 I'm just saying stuff. there's much respect for her nobody was hurt in the exchange everybody enjoyed themselves no she, some more I than mean, others uh, ju- as junkies go you know the the people that they ultimately hurt are, are themselves I mean and obviously the, the peripheral damage is is your family uh, and your friends who care about you um, you know a great deal but you know, in 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 the face of addiction, those things get blinded, and 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 you can't make the choices that that are good or or are beneficial to to your your further movement as a human. It's just to support your addiction. And uh, like I said, uh, Tim. Uh, well, I'm calling you Tim. I'll cut that out. <laughs> Mr. Murder and I um, have actually been. Uh, We've been friends and had uh, family members, many of them die uh, uh, from opioids specifically. So we have a very mm-hmm. um, very unique perspective on this uh, as, as far as, you know, how it affects people. Because the, the people that I have died prob- for us, you know, we, we wish they were alive. What? That's probably why I think it's a big government conspiracy is because I've known so many people that have died because of drugs. And it's like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't believe that that all these people did. Like, it's it's kind of like crack and everything else. And yeah. It's hard to believe that, that all that shit happens and it's just how it happens to go. Well, like we were saying but earlier. I uh, might be overly sensitive about it. I don't know how it is everywhere. I just yeah. know how it is where I've been. Like um, I was saying earlier about the the crack edem- ep- epidemic, it's it's almost actually. I think um, oh, what's his name? Fucking, uh, I'll fuck your couch. What the fuck is his name? You know, who I'm Dave talking. Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. So yeah, he did um, um, a stand up special recently that, that that was actually pretty good. And yeah, yeah. Uh, he he briefly touches on the opio- opioid epidemic, uh, and basically says that, uh, "Hey man, this is exactly what happened to to uh, blacks in in the eighties. You know they're marginalized and targeted, and so now it's fucking middle aged white people." Yeah, so, I think I think it's it's amazing. Like if you go into the hood somewhere, like as both of us have been. And you're going there to buy mm. something from someone. Generally, the people that I bought the best stuff off of were black and Spanish. That might be due to where I live, but that was or, or the level that I was at. But it, it that's always how it seemed to be. Oh, and AIDS none of them also, yeah. would touch that shit ever. Like they would never touch that shit because they knew better. They, but yeah, yeah, and I, I think, think that, that, like I said, the amazing. socioeconomic client, uh, climate of of uh, the way we are in the United States today is, uh, contributes to that easy escape. Um, I people, think it's because people I don't trust crack. authority at this point, so they're willing to to reach out to places that they wouldn't have when when things were working for them as a system. Oops, I think, I any, think uh, it's good that, that they turn to crime. I mean, it's a good thing to turn to crime if you can't make money. Because if you play a numbers game, you can get away with it for a long enough time. But you have to have a real plan. It's like it's like trying to be something in the arts. You have to have a fallback. Well, I think a lot of people it. get, get you know, uh, relative success by doing criminal activities. But it's not a sustainable uh, endeavor for, no, for no, most people. No, it's like a sales job. It, right. You're breaking the law, so it's and a then number. you have to consider morality as well. Is is what you're doing 
like, are you fucking people over, or are you taking advantage of, of, of uh, a loophole that just no, allows if, you to if profit? If you conduct honest business, though, like, I always conduct Well, yeah, if you're selling drugs, let's say, like, um, that aren't going to kill people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, addiction well, is a very nebulous some thing. Some are. But most of the time, people that get involved in addiction are not going to arrive there unless they have uh, ex- external factors. I mean, the person that's providing them with the drugs that, that they're using to get their escape is rarely, if ever, the the uh, catalyst to their ultimate di- addiction. Um, right. I, I always kind of thought, like, the, you know, the person in the car might be giving the money that they would, giving me the money that they would use to feed their kids or oh, heat God. their house in the winter for drugs, but I always kind of thought, like, you know, it, it if it wasn't me, it'd be somebody else. And at least I knew this that is true. what I had, like they weren't going to die because what I had had fentanyl in it or, or you know, some kind of oxide from the side of a you car know, battery. That's, that's a good that, point. It's fucked that's up, gonna but it's kill a good them. point. I like, thought uh, I, I was ethical, but it turns out that ethics don't really matter if what you're yeah, doing is uh, illegal. As Mo- Moose Girl in the, in the RLM channel is saying, most drug dealers, well, drug dealers don't generally care about ODs or anybody's life or anything like that. Um, so it's all about the dollars. No, they're uh, all cheap, justify, they're all cheap I mean, people. They're ruined. Yeah, I mean, most most don't have the justification factor where where things come into it. where They even come to the conclusion that well, they do say if they don't get it here, they're going to go anywhere or somewhere else, but they really don't fucking care about people. Um, well, and that's, that's that's true. The, there are very few that do, anyway. I always cared about people. Other other people in our area, though, like uh, when you lived here, after you left here, actually, mm. like there were several people that, that had told on someone sure. that got a bad shot. And one oh, girl had that, that happen in in, in the, the get McDonald's down the street from here. Yeah, and it was specifically because she had ratted on somebody, and he went to jail. And one of his associates gave her a poison bag. I mean, I and she just I got certainly... put down for being a rat. I mean, I understand that uh, retribution. I mean, I I think people people get things karmically. I mean, I, and I'm not even a believer in karma. Karma. I mean, I'm I'm an atheist for the most part, but. I think, consciously, whether we believe it or not, we reap what we sow. And, uh, you know, if you do something shitty, it's going to fucking bite you in the ass. Uh, and I just taking that extra step to, 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 to kill someone or, or, or make them feel pain or whatever, it's just going to bring that back to you, in my opinion. But... I could be wrong. Maybe I'm it just might, a flower child. But does it go the other way? Because I always kind of felt I was owed something by by any kind of cosmic karma. Now that's narcissism. Like I always felt that's like a different I story nice altogether, things. my friend. Huh? That's narcissism. That's a different story altogether, my friend. <laughs> well, if 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 you do bad and get bad things to happen to you, it would make sense. If you do good, good things would happen to you. I but suppose. I've often seen that that if you do good, sometimes people will take advantage of that, or or they will they will, yeah, uh, in some way in in some way try to exploit you, especially especially where you live, man. Mm-hmm. You live in the in the fucking shark tank, like here. It's oh just yeah, a, no, but I'm fucking. I'm in a pond, and I enjoyed being the size of fish that I was. Yeah. Out there, it's the fucking ocean, dude. That's why you have to you have to be hundred percent aware. I mean, there's always someone who could possibly out to take advantage of you, so you have to be alert. I mean, um, at my hotel in the past uh, few weeks, I had this guy uh, who came in. He, he was obviously an issue. He was obvious, obviously an alcoholic. Uh, he would be telling off my um, my coworkers, uh, but I mean, f- to me, he was really cool because I do not take shit from people. Uh, I I I'm straight. I don't fuck around. So when he came to me, I knew what what he was like already. So I, I had the ability to navigate that. Um, and uh, he was like, ah, "You got a real big taint liquor right there." Because I have a goatee, and I didn't uh, laugh. Uh, I didn't laugh at all. And he's like, he was trying to figure out why I wasn't laughing. And I, and uh, uh, he's, like, he's like, "Do you know what that is? A taint?" I'm like, "Yes, it's called a perineum." 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, a reunion project. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> but so you know, the guy was obviously. I found out later, uh, and there are a lot of homeless people, obviously, around Hollywood area, um, because there's, there's there's a lot of money around here for them to to obtain potentially. So mm-hmm. I find out later that the guy uh, I work with on the earlier shifts who had problems from the man um, saw him begging for change outside of uh, a Vons, a grocery store. And uh, so the guy's like, hey, buddy, what's up? You're from the, the XXX Hotel, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm not there, man. Fuck you. <laughs> so we blocked the guy from... from um, DNR we made him uh, do not rent uh, and he was booking his, his room specifically through uh, Expedia which which are prepaid reservations so that means someone else is paying for them uh, up front and uh, he oh, yeah, came yeah. in like I don't know a week or so after that wearing the paper jail suit and everything like <laughs> like man uh, and I, I, my heart was beating. I'm like, fuck, am I have to call the cops on this guy or what? Because, like, he came in while I was checking this young girl in who was just going to see the Ellen show uh, the next day or whatever the fuck, man. <laughs> and uh, and my heart's beating fucking hard, you know? And I just told him, like, hey, we're not going to rent to you. And he knew why. He just wanted to push the issue. He's, he knew he was a fucking alcoholic shithead. I mean... I, we're not like a low class hotel. I mean, you know, I respect whatever you go through, but there's fucking hundreds of other hotels in the valley. Go to a different one, motherfucker. You know, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, you know my my old boss uh, uh, was this this guy named George, and nobody knew he had a twin brother. And him and his twin brother would switch off days at work <laughs> supervising us at this uh, telemarketing place. And they were both terrible alcoholics. Years later, when I worked at a hotel, George came in and rented six rooms on the, the smoking floor, <laughs> all right next to each other. And uh, he came in and got a room with this like little crackhead chick. And then like all these bloods came in in one giant SUV. Jesus. And uh, uh, came in and got another couple rooms, and then they they just kept filing. And there was six rooms full of uh, uh, one to two people a room, like uh, close to close to ten people, eight or ten people came in that night and uh, got all of those rooms and turned it into an enormous drug party. And they Jesus. gave me the girl gave me uh, she asked me if I smoked, and I thought she meant weed, and she it's gave me like a crack. giant crack rock. Really? Yeah, yeah. She was like, oh, here, I can't smoke with you, but this is for you. And she gave me an enormous crack I got these cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely crazy. Ended up, uh, the, the, they gave me $100 to let them know if the cops ever came. And when the sheriffs did come, they uh, were coming because that guy's wife had, <laughs> had listed him as missing at that point. Because she hadn't seen him in like four days or three wow. days. So don't go and on a crack sheriff, binge with the sheriff showed up. Bitches. They busted that place wide open, and they stayed right next to me, so I couldn't call up and warn them. I felt so bad. Wow. Well, all really good dudes, but but it was just funny because I knew this guy when he was legitimate, and here he is fucking some crack whore, and, and hey man, having all these strokes. gangsters stay just so that uh, he can get some extra drugs <laughs> for a few days and stay away from his wife and kids. That poor son of a bitch went to jail for like five years because of that. Yeah, well. <laughs> hey, man, you live, you learn. Anyway, yeah, I hope he, I hope he found recovery. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'm sure he's in fucking NA or something like that. Or he's probably dead. I'm probably, probably dead. you know, it'd be nice. You know, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so <laughs> we are rounding up on the hour of power here, and uh, I know it's been extremely engaging. Uh, especially for Poopster, because I know he talks a lot, uh, because we give him a lot of chance, I'm sure. But, man, yeah, you got to, like, jump that. in, bro. you got to, like, be like, Motherfucker, I'm going to say this! <laughs> like, be, be more alpha. Like, Aloha Ferret. 
He's he's all about the alpha, even though he's a tranny. <laughs> Definitely a tranny. <laughs> so, in Poopster's honor of being, uh, you know, quiet, I'm going to end on, on on a story about anus. So, this is uh, about a man pulling a 32 foot tapeworm out of his ass. Right, 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 right. That's doable. I, I could see that. that. I mean, I could imagine that. Like, I would, I would fucking videotape it. So, this guy, he dropped his kid off at school, and he felt the urge to drop his kids off at the swimming pool after. Um, wow. Okay, good euphemism. Uh, what do we got? Uh, he headed to a toilet, and he felt something was wrong. He could still fe- feel something going on back there when, when we, he had evacuated his bowels. Um, ah. we, so we have a quote. I had just finished dropping my child off at school and I ran some errands where I had to go number two. He explained to um, someone, according to a translation at the Metro, Afterward, I felt like I wasn't defi- finished defecating. Like something was left. So I got up to see what it was. Turns out there was something sticking out of my bottom. <laughs> wow, the the colon is, is an amazing thing, isn't it? Because thirty eight is. feet is a pretty good distance. Yeah, like so, right, right. Uh, that that's that's a. So yeah, he, at he, what he, point did he feel like one of those clown magicians that pulls a, a, a silk handkerchief oh, that's boy. attached to another one and another Man. one out of a pocket. Holy fuck. That's probably a good question, but uh, he pulled at it and kept tugging until all of what he estimated was to be a 9.7 meter or 32 foot worm came out. Wow. 32. That's some fucking spaghetti right there, man. I hope he ate it after. That would be the only natural thing. That's that's a uh, uh, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, my um, I think a cat of mine had a tapeworm before that we had to you know watch her evacuate. Um, oh man, remember Boogeyman? Boogeyman, yeah, dude. Isn't that the coolest cat ever? He was a cool cat, man. He got kicked by a cow, and so this is a, a stray cat that I took in at a house that uh, Mr. Murder. Uh, knew of mine a growing cow up. the best. Yeah, so, like, he got kicked by a cow because there was a farm down the road from me, and uh, ever since that, he walked funny. He walked with a boogie. So, we called him Boogeyman. And he had, like, his, stung to- his, his, his tongue stuck out, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, fun. yeah. Anyways. He, um, was, he, was, he had mental problems, definitely. He did. But, but he, he was, was a fierce killer. Oh, yeah. And just an awesome cat, like all around. He was, he was, his tongue stuck out all the time, so it looked like he was smiling, kind of. He was just a silly cat. Yeah. Another thing for the record books, um, Mr. Murder and I uh, buried my dog uh, on LSD uh, in my backyard after it got hit by a car. That that that's how far we go back. On LSD, we fucking buried my fucking dog, who I loved, man. That's why I'm fucked up, okay? <laughs> you know why I feel extra bad about that? Because I was, I was at the, uh, the sh- supermarket up the street, and the two guys in front of me were asking how to get to somewhere fun. And I was oh, like, man. shit, man, out here, the only good place to go is the, the uh, Grand View, the, the uh, strip club. So it was probably so them who hit my dog. I, I gave them directions, and they left the supermarket like five to ten minutes before I did and then when I got to your house your dog had been hit by a car and I didn't see anybody else go in that direction and I kept thinking like fuck if I would have told them to go the other way just to fuck with them (laughs) that would have been that would have saved your dog I don't know that for sure but it really fucking seemed like it in my head it's probably right, man. That, that's how things add up. I mean, they, they add up to things that, that you realize you could have prevented, but... Yeah, the butterfly <sighs> effect. Shit. Fuck it, man. What are you going to do? Anyways, that pretty much rounds up the Power Hour for this Thursday in December. And uh, Taylor Smith... 
Uh, it was a golden retriever, Moose Girl. Um, it was an awesome dog. I, I miss him still to this day. Um, at yeah, the you, time, could, you could point your fingers like a gun at him and say bang, and he would fall down and play dead. He was the shit. Yeah, he was a, he was a smart dog. I mean, um, but yeah, that, that really affected real me. loud if you said fuck. That was yeah. good. Yeah, he was yeah, yeah, he would like get really afraid if you cursed and stuff. He'd be like, "Stop it! Stop cursing! Stop the angry!" Like golden retrievers are awesome dogs, but I've never had a dog since then. Uh, I've only had cats, uh, and actually, um, the cat that I've, I had most of my childhood, she lived until till she was uh, twenty five or twenty six years old, and she even had a stroke. Uh, you know, and she she survived that, but uh, eventually she she just passed away in a corner peacefully. So I mean, that's the kind of life you want to live. I mean, uh, shit. Want to know something something odd, man? There's there's very quickly uh, Jason, Jason, our for our mutual friend Jason mm-hmm. had a a turtle. Right. Okay. And he gave that turtle to another friend of mine, who kept it and still has it. And I can go years without seeing that turtle. And when I walk into his house, it starts flapping at the glass. Because out of all the humans it's ever known, I've been there its entire life. It's remember Same Tui? thing as Nacho the cat. No matter who owned Nacho the cat, I was the only person that it knew all the time. Like, remember uh, Tui? Yeah, um, yeah. Because J- Jay had Tui. Uh, that was actually my ex-girlfriend's cat. And once she just fell off the map, she just like, here, have my cat. You yeah, know? yeah. And uh, Jay took care of Tui how, until he died, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah uh, I, I knew Tui its entire life, too. I used to put that, when that cat was a kitten, I put its head in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Just to prove that I probably could bite the head off <laughs> of a kitten. My cat right now, she, uh, we found her, like, literally in a gutter downtown LA I call her Camilla Rhodes and if if, yeah. if you know the the um, the David Lynch film Mulholland Drive you'll understand why I named a cat that was uh, you know on the streets of Hollywood not knowing having any sort of future or anything that name so we just say Silencio um, but that's the best kind of cat to have no I love her she's my, my little kid man she I, I wouldn't uh, I look out for, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. That's that's yeah. good. Poopster, you have a pet? No, I don't. Just your wife, right? And your kids. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my kids are actually allergic to. Oh, um, I see. I see. Yeah. You should get a hairless your wife, cat, and only man. when she wears the collar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. On that note of uh, domination and uh, uh, sexual experimentation, I suppose we will end the power hour, unless Poopster has anything he wants to add. Um, I'm good. You're good. Well, let me just... I'm uh, good. I, I am not good. I, I am... I am evil incarnate. No, I'm joking. I'm no, just I'm a good. simple guy that likes perverts and murder. <laughs> well, like I said, on that note, we will leave you. Um, I, I'd like to thank Mr. Murder for uh, no, coming on you. with us tonight. Yeah, it was great, man. Uh, you have your laptop now, so maybe we'll have you on one of these days in the future. Um, Funny story about that, actually. It's broke. It, it arrived broke. Yeah. Well, fuck those people. Yeah. Th- thank you for telling me to get a MacBook in the first place when you were drunk, number one. <laughs> and number two, thank you for now. Now I have a $435 paperweight. Well, $435 is actually a, a, a small dent for a MacBook, but um, depending I on know. where you bought it from, you should be able to get that back. Yeah, I got it from Vegas. It, it's going back, or it's getting fixed. Yeah, I'm going to well, see what's happening tomorrow. Raise hell, man. I was going to get a ThinkPad, too, you motherfucker. No, you, actually, Poopster will tell you about ThinkPads. Poopster, oh, yeah. Think what is pad. the most Go affordable ThinkPad? Think That's what I said. I was like, oh, I can get a Lenovo ThinkPad built for me for like 300 I don't know why I recommended a Mac, a Mac to you if I did. $80 more. 
and fucking Prince here is like, oh man, get a MacBook. They're easy. I really to use. don't remember saying that. I was I was like, I don't. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm. I know you're PC. not like audio files, so. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you're 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 uh, you were like, oh, I know you like PC. You get used to MacBook. They're really <laughs> good, man. If I, if I could get a good MacBook, I'd use fucker. it. And I was like, all right, man, I'll I'll give it a shot. Just and then the next time bad, I man. said anything Should've... about it, you were like, oh. So, Smart people use PC. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Told me to get this shit. Oh, so I man. got this thing that I didn't want in the first place and didn't like, and now it's fucking broken. It's all your fault. Yeah, get a ThinkPad. Think, think bro. bro. Yeah, dude. Uh, think bro. Uh, if you, if you uh, need to know any recommendations for ThinkPad specifically, um, come to the Holy Roger channel, and uh, Poopster will advise you uh, in, in terms of what ThinkPad would make you an ideal think bro because there are right. a lot of them. I've been yeah, with ThinkPad yeah, since I, I will do from that IBM. once this whole mess is sorted out. Mm, <laughs> Most mm. definitely. All right. All right. Fair enough. Well, uh, on that note, like I said, my friends, I, I will uh, bid you adieu. 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 Yeah. To ya and ya and ya. <laughs> oh, never mind. But, uh,. Yes. So, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Power Hour, brought to you by the Holy Roger Coin at Hail Satan Roger Consortium, <laughs> Roger Consortium <laughs> on Twitter, traded on altmarkets.io. A bunch of fucking awesome guys, Wheeler and Johnny over there. So, shout out to altmarkets.io. Trade your Roger and Doge and whatever else on there, because. They will not let you down. And again, thanks for tuning into the Power Hour. Till next week. Peace. Peace. Dead life out.